Guys, there's a lot to be sad about in the world. Uh, nuclear war, climate change, what's going to happen when the oil runs out, Peter K. Um, but one thing that I do cling on to, right, when I need something to cheer me up, particularly now, is the absence of Suella Braverman in the Tory leadership campaign. <laughs> the total absence of Suella Braverman. When you consider all of that plotting, that briefing that she did, the Telegraph article she put out where she was like undermining Rishi Sunak. Do you remember Tory conference where Rishi Sunak was doing his keynote speech, his prime ministerial Tory leader headline spot at Tory conference. And she, as his home secretary, that's her boss up there. She's supposed to be supportive and smile and clap. And she had a face like a smacked ass. <laughs> like, she hated him. They hated each other. And all that plotting and briefing and undermining and all the hysteria, you know, calling peaceful protests, hate marches, all of the batshit rhetoric that she came out with, the popcorn conferences, all of it, all of it was for nothing. <laughs> Like, I remember seeing coverage, like reading tweets by Dan Hodges, who is a Mail on Sunday correspondent. And uh, he was reacting to her appearance, uh, appearance at the National Conservatism Conference or something. And he was saying, you know, can we just all acknowledge that this is Suella Braverman's leadership pitch? Like, I mean, we can call it other things as well, but that is ultimately what we're dealing with here is Suella Braverman is trying to become the next Tory leader. And she was. It was obvious for all to see. She hated Rishi Sunak. She was to Sunak what Boris Johnson was to Theresa May. Constantly plotting, leaking, undermining because she wanted to stab him in the back and then get that job. And it was all for absolutely nothing. She wasn't even in the first round of the Tory leadership contest. And who was? Who has actually ended up in the front runner, the poll position with the most votes from fellow MPs at the moment? Who's there? Her number two, Robert Jenrick, the guy that worked for her in the Home Office, is now the favourite to become the next Tory leader. Oh, that's got a sting. And it's quite reassuring in a way. It's quite reassuring because against the backdrop of all the depressing, horrible things that are out there, it's quite reassuring to hear that in these hugely divided times where the temptation to run towards your team, you know, oh, I'm a member of Team Blue and you're a member of Team Red, so I hate you there, you know, all the tribalism that we're all forced to deal with every day. It's quite reassuring that when we on the left observe people on the right who to us appear to have got progressively more and more insane and radicalised over the last like five or six years, it's quite reassuring to see that there is still a limit <laughs> in terms of what they're willing to accept in their leaders. So like the last five or six years in Conservative, they've completely abandoned their usual conservative pillars. So self-responsibility, making something of yourself, offering people social mobility, tough on crime. I mean, they break more laws than they write or respect these days. Typical conservative pillars or pillars of conservatism have been abandoned. And instead, the conservative conversation has moved progressively towards what? Hysteria over immigration, hysteria over refugees banging on about boats. Nobody was more hysterical about immigrants and refugees and asylum seekers than Suella fucking Braverman. <laughs> Nobody. But it's nice, it's reassuring to see that there are obviously key decision makers up on high, the men in grey suits in the Conservative Party for whom she is a step too far. <laughs> like, they're like, no, 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 culture war. The culture war serves a purpose, OK? We're not against the culture war. Symbolism over substance, it's, it, it has political benefits to it. Absolutely. You know, oh, what about trans people? Oh, what about this person over here? What about young people? Bloody Ramonas, avocado on toast. We bloody love it. It's good. It's useful to distract people with. But you're a little bit crazy, Sue. You know, you can uh, you can tell foreigners to F off back to France like Lee Anderson. You can bang on about puppies and the proms and statues all you like. 
that the second you stand up there behind that podium at the National Conservatism or the Popcorn Conference or whatever the fuck it is you do so, the second you start calling peaceful protests hate marches or going up to the dispatch box and saying stuff about tofu eating woke karate, you're just insane, Sue. So there's two things I think we can glean from Suella Braverman's absence in even any heat of the Tory leadership. The first thing is it's reassuring that there is still a limit to the craziness, to the radicalisation that they're willing to see in their potential leaders. It's nice to see there's still a limit. And the second thing is it's nice to see all of that hard work that she put in, all the leaking, plotting, undermining, grandstanding, all of that, all of that was all for nothing soon.